Hey everybody, now we're going to talk about the nose gear development on this uh, aircraft, the way I got the, basically the nose gear to retract and the doors to retract and it to steer. And this is kind of a long and painful process that I went through. I went through many different versions of it and it was just, um, I don't know how to describe it. It was one of the most frustrating things I've designed but it actually worked out perfect. So here you see I'm just working out the geometry of the nose gear door. And uh, which actually this wasn't that hard, but it was getting the door behind the wheel to work with that front door, just using uh, basically uh, push rods and stuff like that, doing it mechanically, not with servos. And, you know, I said in my main uh, video that I did on this nose gear, that I hated the air system and I did get rid of the air system, but this is showing it being tested with the air system, just so you know. And, uh, you know, the geometry on all of this is basically taken from the real C-130. I was lucky enough that a uh, colonel gave me the technical drawings to the C-130 landing gears and stuff, so it really helped me massively. But here's one of the things that um, you need to understand is, you know, to get to Carnegie Hall, it takes practice. These are all the parts I started to build for the rear door, um, a way to move the rear door. And all of these were garbage. None of, them, none of them worked. I mean, I spent weeks with geometry. And when I draw it in CAD, it looked like it worked. But when I go to do it, the air system wasn't strong enough or the door didn't close tight. There was just so many things that didn't work. And... I tell you, it was maddening. However, I did, I was lucky enough that, you know, when I started thinking about how could I adjust, fine tune this, I ended up with these two little arms here. And by having those holes in there, those are, believe it or not, two degree adjustments. So what it gave me was a system that actually started to work. And as you can see here, the nose gear really, I, I mean, it really started to come together. I was still totally frustrated because underneath those two doors is just a rat nest of what I call garbage, just bad design. Um, even though this looks like it's working flawlessly, I was just so frustrated with the way the air system was, the reliability of the air system to get it to kind of move in a scale speed, but also to get things from jamming. So somebody, a hater, says, well, that would never open into a wind. So I got my uh, leaf blower out that says it has 130 mile an hour of wind. And here you can see my leaf blower blowing on it. And, you know, it opened and closed it. So, you know, I thought, okay, maybe the air system's worth it. But at night, I would lay in bed and think about all the garbage underneath those doors, the way that the push rods, rods were activated, the way the air system kind of moved, the way the, the nose gear. I mean, just look at this. I mean, this was total chaos underneath the hood. And I hated it. And it just kept eating me up. So... I actually went back to the drawing board. I started all over again. And as you can see, this is just garbage. It's a horrible design. I mean, it worked, but I knew the reliability. I knew that, uh, look at this. I mean, it's just hideous. So basically what I did was I went back to the scratch board. Uh, I mean, back to the drawing board. And I came up with this system where the servo was on the nose gear. You can see under the left there, an electric jack screw that's moving this. And now... I found uh, basically uh, won the lottery and I don't know how to explain all the systems in this just look at all the wiring mess in it now you can see some lights in the bottom right hand corner and you'll see those later but I actually created um, uh, annunciator lights to tell me if my limit switches were being struck correctly so when it would go in one direction the LEDs would be one color like up was blue and down was white and it was telling me when the lights went off that it had actually hit the limit switches and um, I know this sounds complicated as hell because it was, but it worked. And the steering and everything was flawlessly. So I knew now I'd won the lottery and the system was going to work. Here's kind of a breakdown of how the um, uh, jack screw system worked that I developed. So you've got the up uh, travel, the down travel, or the up limit, down limit, and then you had the over travels in case it ever passed those pr primary limits. And it worked really well. I mean, this was... Uh, this was like Hollywood. I mean, it, but it took me another two weeks to develop this. And here you'll get to see it actuate. And unfortunately, um, before I actuate it, I, I want to, one thing I want you to understand is when you, when you see this thing move here, um, that right there is 88 pounds of force. 
So the reason I love the jack screws was that the air system, even though you can get a lot out of an air system, but you're really getting the most out of your air system at 110 PSI. With a jack screw here, you're getting it as long as your voltage is up across the entire movement here. So that right there had a, a stroke of 88 pounds. So here it is with the all the uh, access panels off it, and it was just so smooth. It was rock solid. I mean, it was absolutely rock solid. And when I did the drop test, dropping the plane from 11 inches, this thing uh, recoiled. Everything worked perfect. But as you can see, I'm in love with jack screws now. All the landing gear I developed for people, which if you want landing gear built, I'm not talking to anybody until almost 2023 right now. But um, all the landing gear I developed now, I use jack screws. I don't touch air systems at all. They're all mechanically actuated. This gives you a door a, a idea of the mock-up of the door and how the door worked, the rear door. And all this geometry was the biggest pain in the butt, but it all paid off. So here is the finished product, the way it worked, and it was flawlessly. I did take my leaf blower and blow 130 mile an hour air over this, and it didn't even phase it. So uh, persistence and perseverance paid off, everybody. You can see the uh, annunciator lights in this picture. Blue means it's going up. And once they all go out, it means that it hit all of its limit switches. And then down is white. And when they go out, it means it hit all of its limit switches. And this is for all uh, the gear, all six motors that ran this. I'm sorry, five motors that ran it. There are four motors on the main gear. And you can see the main gear blurry in the background coming down. And there's one motor on the nose gear. So there were five enunciator lights that basically told me the state of my landing gear and the way the landing gear was working. So, yeah, it worked flawlessly when it was done. So, yeah, um, it was like I said in the past, I've sold this to a friend and he's putting turbines on it. It was the hardest thing to sell, but the money he offered me was unreal. And uh, it still breaks my heart. I sold it and people are still pissed at me, but... Oh, well, I have to have a way to afford my hobby. Rock on, everybody. I hope you enjoy these videos, and see you next time.